This lesson is about two pitch effects that were added to the most recent version of Adobe Audition. They're called the Pitch Bender and the Pitch Shifter. There are differences between the two. The Pitch Bender works only here inside the editor panel and is a process effect or a so-called destructive effect. When you make changes, you change the file and you need to be careful when you save it, save it to some other file name if you don't want to change the original file. So that's a destructive or process effect. The pitch shifter is also a process effect. It will also change the file, but it is also a real-time effect. You can use it inside a multi-track session where you don't touch the file, and it behaves differently inside the multi-track session. If you want to follow along with this, you can go get this instrumental mix file by going to the working files folder, go to the music folder inside there, just too hard to find, and go on down and get the instrumental mix right there. All right, let's take a look at the pitch bender effect first. Go to effects. Time and pitch, and then pitch bender, and you see it's a process effect there. A couple things happen. You get the dialog box, and the editor view suddenly splits into two. It goes into the preview mode. Preview mode comes on by default because the pitch bender can change the duration of a clip. I've got my preference set to that. If I go to Edit or Adobe Audition Preferences, Effects, you'll see that I've got this thing automatically show the preview editor when an effect which changes the duration is available for preview. Let's take a look at how this works. What you can do is you can change the pitch over time, and you use this envelope to do that. Let's take a look at a couple of presets. I'll go over here and we'll take a look at down a whole step. And you can see that, okay, it goes from there and goes down to there. A whole step is the equivalent of two semitones. The semitone goes up a half a step, goes from C to C sharp, for example. Two semitones goes up a whole step. That's like C to D, like Do, Re. So we have two semitones here, a whole step. When you think two semitones, that's not very much. If I'm changing pitch, I'm changing it only by one whole note. That seems kind of odd. Well, what's going on here is the range. I can change the range up to 60 semitones here. I'll go to, let's say, 12, which is equal to one octave. And now I've changed it such that that distance now is no longer two semitones. Now it's 12. So that distance hasn't changed. The value there, though, has. It's gone from two to 12. So this thing is now a whole octave, not just a whole step. And to hear that, I'm going to turn off spline curves. That little curve there sometimes takes sort of forever to go from one point to the other. So I'll switch off spline curves. I'm going to pull these guys much closer together now. You notice every time I make a change, it refreshes down here in the preview mode. We're going to keep on rolling along up here. Make my current time indicator right there and play this. I hope you think that's remarkable because it is remarkable that the audio quality is so good despite the fact that it was slowed way down and it's also gone down a whole octave. The timbre is exactly the same. It's just like you put your finger on the turntable and slowed it down, but you didn't affect the quality of the audio. That's really amazing what's going on under the hood here inside this effect. In fact, there is a turntable slowing down preset. Let's go over there and take a look at that. It's called the turntable losing power. What happens is it starts right here and starts losing power gradually and then drops off. Well, that's a long way to lose power from 30 seconds in all the way to the end here at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's change that by dragging these little keyframes a little closer like that, a little more realistic. Pull this way over like that. Pull this guy over like that. A little bit faster, but still it's going to take too long, I think. So I'm going to zoom in at the end there like so. Drag these guys a little bit closer to the end so I can show you how this works. And you notice that under this first keyframe, there's still some room there. So when you have the spline curve, it does have this sort of gradual change. So I'm going to add one more keyframe to make sure that happens less slowly. I'll click there and raise you up to zero. So that means it starts really right there and then drops off. It takes a while to refresh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is just so darn cool. All right, let's turn off that little preset and do some manual work here. Back to the default. And we'll just zoom way back out here again like this. And now to add some keyframes, you just click anywhere on the envelope. That adds a keyframe. Nothing will change here because we haven't changed the value. I'll go over here and add another keyframe. Again, nothing's changed until we pull this thing up or down. I want to get kind of a semi-accurate view here. And it's really hard to get a good accurate number. And you can't type in a number over here. So what I want to do is I want to go, let's say, up four, and boy, that's not working very well, right? So I want to change it from 48 semitones, which it went to when we switched over to the turntable slowing down preset, to something like 12 semitones to make it a little more workable there. And now I want to go over here and change this to four. And again, I can sort of do it accurately, but if I get rid of the preview, it's a little bit easier. So I'll drop the preview off there like that. And now I'll take this thing to four. Right about there. And it's a little bit easier to find for here now than it was before. So that should work. And let's see what that sounds like. I'll take the current time indicator right about there. A 
if I want to just bring that down here, I click another keyframe and then bring it back down like that. And then we can also drop it back down if we want to down an octave. There's one more option here, this little beats per minute versus semitones. They basically work hand in hand. So if I click over there and you change that mic, we'll say beats now instead of semitones. But they end up working basically the same way. If I change this like that and then switch back to semitones, then you'll see that this is now switched over to semitones instead of beats. One other thing is the quality setting, and I like to work with perfect. So I can wait till I'm done to switch that on. All right, and one more thing before we move on, I want to show you what happens with the duration here. I'll go back and click on this view so you see the preview mode. And after it refreshes, you'll see that we've gone from an original time of 3 minutes and 20 seconds to 6 minutes and 5 seconds, almost double the length because we dropped the pitch way down. So do be aware that when you change the pitch, you change the duration when you work with the pitch bender. All right, let's close this. Switch over to the pitch shifter. You find that over here in effects as well. Effects, time and pitch, pitch shifter. Now it doesn't say process here, but it is in fact the process effect here inside the editor panel. But it also is real time effect when you work in a multi-track session. So I'll click Pitch Shifter there. There's a dialog box. Let me go back to you. set the default. And it says semitones again and cents. There are 100 cents per semitone, so 200 cents in one whole tone. The only range you have here is one octave either way, so two octaves all together. So not anywhere near as much as the pitch bender. And the audio quality is not that good either. I'll play this here so you can hear the original. I'll take it down an octave like that. Let's see what it sounds like. Not so good. I'll change to high precision. Not as good sounding as the bender. Let me turn on appropriate default settings. That's like the best way to go. High precision, default settings like that. Now let's listen to it. Still kind of a warble there. So dropping it just one octave compared to the bender, it's not as good in terms of the quality, the timbre. But what's good about it is that it doesn't change the duration of the clip. And you can also work on one segment at a time. So I'm going to go back to the default here like so. I can just take a segment like that and we'll affect just that segment. So we'll go up, let's say, four semitones, and I can type in four here so we can get a really accurate reading there. And now we'll apply that by using high precision and appropriate default settings and apply it. Now let's listen to it. It'll be very abrupt. So that's how it works. You can hear it's a little bit rough there. The audio quality is not perfect, but in any event, that's the pitch shifter and it does not change the duration. Let's take a look at how this thing works in a multi-track session. I'll undo what we just did there. Control or Command Z to undo that. I'll get rid of that selection. Now we'll go to the session here. That instrumental mix is already here inside the session. Now to add the pitch shifter effect, I do it in the rack here. But before I do that, I want to show you the controls that are not quite there yet, but will be shortly. You access the controls for the pitch shifter here in this drop-down arrow. And the envelopes, I'll open the envelopes, and you see there's these various kinds of envelopes that you can turn on or off. Right now, volumes is one that's on. There's nothing here about the pitch shifter, but I'm going to add the pitch shifter here by clicking this menu there. Go to time and pitch, pitch shifter. Put this over to the side for the time being. We'll take it to the default settings for now. Let's take a look at this now under the envelopes. Now we have pitch shifter, and the only option is transpose ratio. We don't have control over semitones. We have control only over the ratio here. Right now it's set to 1, so if I change it from the default to something else like 12, then the ratio goes up to 2, from 1 to 2. Now if I put a keyframe there, let's say there, move over here to the right, I want to change this from 12 to let's say 0, it doesn't change it. It would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. You need to make the change manually. So I click on this, and I drag it down to 1. So the ratio is 1, which means that it's the original pitch, 1 to 1 ratio. A 2 to 1 ratio means you've gone up an octave, which is the most you can do here. So we'll start it off and see what it sounds like. And it gradually goes back down here to the original pitch, and it's hard to get it exact. It's kind of tricky to be exact here. That's one little drawback. But it is a real-time effect. It happens right here. It does not affect the original clip and does not change the duration. So that is how you work with the pitch bender and the pitch shifter.